Pia will uh, begin by saying a few things about a small states approach. You, you can go there, you can stand with them. Okay. Maybe it's better to yeah. say that. Well, first of all, thank you all so very much for allowing me to uh, come here and address address you today and speak a little bit about small states. I'm actually director of the Center for Small State Studies here at the University of Iceland. So we are very much, of course, concerned with looking at the small, which is uh, fairly easy to do when you live in a small country, right? Um, our studies go uh, quite uh, a few years back. Our center was started uh, in uh, 2003, officially opened then. And uh, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what it is that we do, we uh, publish quite a bit. We uh, host many seminars. We participate in, in research and in all kinds of research collaborations uh, across the spectrum. And um, within the Institute of International Affairs that houses the Center for Small State Studies, we also have a Center for Arctic Policy Studies. And uh, we're now looking at establishing a third unit, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what it is that we do. We're now actually going to work with the city of Reykjavik to establish something called the Peace Center, the Reykjavik Peace Center. So um, this seems like quite a large picture, right? And, and many topics that I'm throwing out there at you. But if, uh, if you connect all the dots, then what we really are interested in is Nordic, West Nordic, Arctic, small states, and the kind of security of the environment we live in. And security, of course, is a very wide description of what it is that we want to have in our environment to be able to live peacefully and, and enjoy our lives. So this is kind of to, to frame it a little bit and to give you an idea of what it is that we are interested in in, uh, in the centers that we run here at the university. Uh, we're very happy to be part of this, this uh, network and uh, I was very much inspired by listening to you, Lau, because you, you, you put a very clear picture out there and I thought it was uh, really nice to get a whole <laughs> introduction to the topic because I am no expert on green growth at all. Uh, but uh, I think what it does and uh, what it brings to mind is this is something that is so highly important, not of course just for small states but for all of us. So then we need to look at what can small states contribute? What can Nordic small states contribute in this aspect? And I think that uh, for many of the Nordic small states through the years, we have felt that we have had a role. And uh, for many of the Nordic small states, they brand themselves as, well, let's say norm entrepreneurs. You know, that we, we go out there and we tell people what is a good way of approaching things. And I think that's where we need to be very careful. We need to be mindful of that we have an environment that is uh, very secure, very peaceful, very non-threatening. We don't have a very large population, most of us. We have different things to deal with, of course. But we need to be very mindful of that we're not putting ourselves up on the high horse and telling everyone else how to do things. So I think that's very important when we talk about green growth or any, any other things that we want to promote as a good uh, policy anywhere in the world. So we, we need to be mindful of our own smallness, but also of uh, the advantages we have living where we live. So those are the things that I'd uh, like to kind of push out there towards you. Also, I, I liked what you uh, mentioned about the dialogue. You know, we need to be very mindful of how we present these things. Because I think that many of the policies and many of the things that are being promoted today as this is what we need to do, they tend to become very complex. And for anyone trying to enter a dialogue on environmental issues, I think many of us even feel shy just trying to do it because we feel that we don't know the definitions, we don't know the language, the lingo that needs to be used. So uh, let's also be mindful of that, that the dialogue needs to be simple, it needs to be open, and, and thereby we might possibly reach civil society and anyone else that needs to be involved as well. And creating those bridges to, uh, of course, industry, and to all the private partners that need to participate in any kind of a dialogue like this. It's very important. So complexity is one thing, keep that in mind and keep it simple. 
short and sweet. I think that's often often a good case. You know, when you want to get people really involved, and it wants you want it to be a global dialogue, right? So those are the things that I uh, that kind of strike me when I start thinking about this. So let's keep that in mind. Of course, anyone anyone that studies small states knows that we we're always trying to figure out, you know, what what is it that we can do? What kind of influences are possible for Nordic small states? And uh, when we have when we come from a position of power in many ways in in many of these areas that we're discussing, we we need to use this wisely. It's for many of the small states a strategy, of course, to be able to present yourself like a norm entrepreneur. You, you try to kind of balance that against not being very powerful, as many of the other actors are. But um, this is an interesting network, and I'm really happy that Canada is part of this as well. I think that's really excellent, bringing together not just us in the West Nordic region, but also getting the, the larger actors involved, because in the end, that's what we need to be able to influence this kind of a dialogue. So I think I'll leave you with that. I hope it wasn't completely out of line with the discussions that you'll continue having, but I'm looking forward to the dialogue and any questions you may have, and um, I'll yield the floor to Lister. Thank you.